Hi, I'm Daniela with Young Entertainment. Thank you both so much for having us. Thank you. Really young and entertained. <laughs> Hi, Daniela. Thanks, Daniela. Thanks for having me. Hi. Hello. Hi. Thank you guys so much for chatting with me today. So we'll just jump right in. Why was it important to you to create and work on this project? Well, um, as you might know, the story is based entirely on my family history. So um, I guess I'd have to rewind back to the year 2000 when I sat down at a family reunion and started hearing stories about my relatives that were unlike anything I'd ever heard before. Um, my grandfather, I was close with him growing up, but he never spoke about his Holocaust era past. And so um, there came a point in time where I decided somebody has to write these stories down. And, and finally, I raised my hand and said that somebody would be me. <laughs> and I set off in 2008 to unearth and record the story of yeah, my grandfather and his siblings and his parents and his young niece as they scatter at the start of the war, wow. trying to survive and and also to reunite. Um, and I, I really did it for two reasons back then was to preserve the story of the family yeah. and to honor what they went through to get it down on paper. I didn't know what form it would take. And I certainly didn't think I'd be here today talking about a television series adapted from it. Um, I went into it as the family historian. Um, and I also wanted to write it in a way that my kids and their kids and so on could pick it up and appreciate it and, and not just learn about what happened, but feel like they were there in that moment, um, living it with their relatives and, and make their story feel, feel relevant in that way. Wow. Wow. Okay. So <clears throat> this isn't in my notes, but I have to ask now. So yeah. that is that is so intriguing that it went from, okay, being the family historian, wanting to preserve these, these stories. Mm -hmm. And then now it's turned into this series. How how yes. did that happen? How did that come to life? Uh, it's also a very personal story. So the book came out in 2017. And then about a year later, um, my friend Tommy Kale called. I've known Tommy for 19 years. We go way, way back. Um, and he said, hey, buddy, how would you like to partner up and try to bring this story to the screen? And Tommy's obviously not only an incredible human, but phenomenally talented um, director and producer. So when he optioned the book, it just felt like a dream come true because to be honest, I was nervous for it to fall into the wrong hands. I didn't want it to be exploited or, or told in a way that I wasn't comfortable with. But with Tommy at the helm and, and he brought on Erica Lopez, who I fell in love with immediately, who's just a wonder woman of talent. Um, she took it into her heart. We created a, a room full of writers. Um, we we pitched, you know, Hulu embraced it the way that Erica had embraced it. And I knew we'd found our home with our network. And so the whole thing just felt right. And there was so much trust between everybody. And uh, I got to be a part of it every step of the way, the production. And I feel so lucky. So why was it important for you to create and work on this piece? I, well, when Tommy gave me this book, I... I read it in 24 hours. I couldn't put it down. It was one of the most compelling uh, family stories I had ever read, I, you know, about a chapter of history that as a Jewish woman, I felt like I, I knew a lot about the Holocaust and had a pretty good education. But this was informing me about um, that period of time from perspectives I had never seen before, through, all through the really intimate lens of this family. And I love family stories. I think that's one of my favorite things to write about sibling dynamics, parent children dynamics, you know, those people meeting their spouses, starting their families. And all of that was in this series through the lens of the court's family. And so it felt like, um, I mean, the dream of a lifetime to try to make a series like this and maybe the challenge of a lifetime, but one that was, I mean, ultimately just an absolute dream to bring to life. Incredible. Tommy, what about you? You know, I, I I think similarly to Erica, you know, what I what I've am looking for, I, I feel ultimately is I love stories centered on communities or families, um, families within communities. That seems to be a sort of recurring <laughs> theme, um, you know, for me. I, I I also am interested in looking at a family that is having to evolve and change. And mm. so there's something about the circumstances of our story that meant everybody who you meet in that first episode uh, has to in some way both be that person and then say goodbye to that person because mm -hmm. of the the events happening um in, you know in the world and so yeah. that to me meant uh 
like a, a real launching point for storytelling, uh, an opportunity to get to know through behavior who these characters were and and who they'll be. And I just I like stories that have sprawl to them, you know, that have scope in this okay. way. It's it's something that's a a little more um, uh, sort of. Uh, well suited to this medium um, as opposed to the theater yeah. where I, I often work and and often the stories have a different kind of streamlining. So I, I yeah. love the breadth that the story could allow us to explore. And, you know, and I think it's, uh, you know, and I think that there's, there's something at, at the center of this, um, you know, who am I now and who am I going to be that I, yeah. that I think uh, became a real um, source of, uh, you know, of inspiration and energy for us. This is a serious project here. So why was it important for you to take on a role such as this one? I think it's, first of all, a great book written by Georgia Hunter. It's a bestseller and not for no reason. It's a page turner that just captivates the, the reader from the first minute you, you, you get the book in your hand. And it was adopted so well by Erica Lipez and made it to a great series. Uh, and it's a real life story. So I think for me... Uh, portraying this real character, this Georgia Hunter's real life family that went through this horrible journey, but were lucky enough to survive. It was almost like uh, an honor and a mission to jump into the character of Salem and to be part of the family of We Were the Lucky Ones. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, I, I agree. I'm with Michael on everything he says. Um yeah. Why? I don't yeah. know who Catherine says. I always, wife. I'm with my I husband. I agree with says. him. Yeah, he's always <laughs> right. Um, I yeah, it. no, but I, I do, I do completely agree with you. And um, and luckily, also, I think as actors, like uh, let's face it, when you get something that's written so so well, it's yeah. just it's just a gift. Um, the book was absolutely incredible and so unique. I've <laughs> never. I've read a lot of books about this time in history and I never read something that got me so like just feeling the people in it. It was just something so simple and intimate about it. Um, yeah. And that was very unique for me. And the writing of the scripts is just like, you can't get it wrong. It was just so beautiful. And, and it's a gift <laughs> for actors. I, I think this person was an incredibly important person in the yeah. lives of all of her children um and really every life she touched she's one of those people because she really did exist um whose mm, strength and uh, its fundamental goodness feels mm -hmm. like it radiated out and touched that whole community around her uh and um i love the chance to hold someone like that up to the light. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's really beautiful. That's such a beautiful answer. I love that. So speaking of portraying such an in-depth, beautiful character, we know that these roles were heavy to play. So what kind of headspace did you have to get into before doing a scene? Really, our work with each other was to <gasps> bring joy to each other outside oh. the work you know we just yeah. delighted in each other's company we played we we went we played tennis we we went out to dinner together a lot we took little day trips together when we had days off we did all kinds of things it was such a loving network of um souls over there in Romania and then Malaga um that was really what we did for one another because the work itself took us to such deep and dark places sometimes um yeah. That had we been um, like that all the time, <laughs> offset, it would have it would have been uh, such overkill. And and I think um, that's why there's a there's a, there's a mysterious buoyancy to the series as you watch it, in spite mm -hmm. of the unbelievably heavy subject matter and how emotional the performances are. And that buoyancy comes from everything that was going on behind the scenes is, is our, yeah. our total affection for each other. I think it, I think you can see it. I think you can see it when you watch, you know, you can see that we loved each other. Um, it's a texture of the, uh, yeah. of the journey that the audience gets to take. And I'm so grateful for that part of it. Um, yeah. Wow. That's amazing. What is the one thing that you are going to take away from working on this project? The thing that you are going to hold most near and dear from working on this? 
the value of motherhood, mm -hmm. the uh, treasure that is a good mother, uh, underserved so often by society, but um, a, a profound recognition of um, what a vital thing, wow. service it is to the world to be a good mother. Um, mm -hmm. And I felt that through this character very much. So was there one thing that you learned about the Holocaust while working on this project that you didn't know before? Well, I think it's, uh, we were the lucky ones, as the title implies. Yeah. You know, there were so many who weren't lucky. And I think uh, for the young entertainment readers and viewers, like, I think it's a good reminder, go back to history books, go and read, go and learn the history that just happened recently, not too long ago. We were like one is a story about a family that survived and so many families didn't survive. And this black hole in human times should never, ever repeat itself. Yeah. I think it's a great reminder for everyone to learn a lesson about what evil can look like in the face of evil and how hate can in a second be spreaded and blind us from what our true values are. And we have to believe and hope like this family that love will conquer it but mm -hmm. to educate ourselves of what just recently happened. I think what I was really, I, I think, important for me and my own education was in some ways those years leading up to the start of the um, the final solution and the concentration camps. It's, mm -hmm. I think, you know, I think it's really important to see how this can happen within a society and to see how these this family is living in Poland and um, this is a community that they're well integrated in that they're a part of that they have friends and neighbors and to see sort of the circumstances change around them and I felt like um, Georgia's story really walked through those horrifying steps of sort of how humanity gets chipped away um, but then I think beyond that it's like I had I, you know, I think a lot of my education was more concentrated in, um, in Eastern Europe. And so the fact that, you know, you have one sibling who ends up um, in Siberia and then Kazakhstan and then um, is in a war in Italy, it's, you know, I th and then you have another character who escapes the continent and ends up in um, Brazil, but has many steps along the way trying to seek refuge somewhere. I mean, there's, I think those stories in particular were not ones that I had, um, I had gotten to explore before, right. and it was really educational, and I hope, um, and fascinating. I mean, I hope people really feel compelled by it. Yeah. Wow. That's powerful. Uh, you know, I think that the the experience and the the day to day life of what it meant to be part of the Jewish resistance, which the yeah. which the show explores, is something wow. that I I was um, I was keen for us to to try to represent on screen. Uh, just what the what what the work was, and then the the subterranean work, um, you know, the sort of the, the dual life that was lived um, and the exploration of that and and the tension of what that must feel like to be moving through the world in that way. So uh, again, this sort of far-flung diaspora was also something, mm -hmm. you know, you'll hear about um, how uh, Australia or Argentina had an influx of Jews at certain times and you and the question of how, how people went from one place to another with such great distance and-, wow. and to restart their lives and so i think that in this story you know with these siblings you had a chance to to follow their stories and again because georgia did so much deep research you know she really laid the you know the path for us definitely no i mean we all we all know people that it happened it's in our families it's your yeah. family it's my family we've all it's it's in our dna for us it's not just a historical event or a, right. a story in black and white it's actually like I remember my grandmother telling me about the way she was separated from her parents and and when I was younger I used to be like oh my, it's my grandmother but it it takes time to understand that life actually happened I I don't know how to explain yeah. it because when I was younger my grandmother told me about it I was like oh a long long time ago <laughs> something happened to my grandmother yeah but now I understand that she was like carrying it with her all the time and she remembers her parents like yesterday and she misses them and she was a kid and wow. it's so important to know people that it happened to them and if you don't then 
then if it helps to see a story and to relate to the people that that really is important and helps yeah i didn't understand how deeply it lived inside of me yeah and all i can say is i mean what is both devastating but informative surprise that was when i would open a door to an experience that belonged to the character and find that it went fathoms deep in my own being um, from experiences I'd never lived through, but my ancestors had. Um, that was a humbling, um, but also beautiful experience. Yeah, there were so many stories that I uncovered. And I'd say one big bucket um, came from the side of my great uncle Ginnick. And when I went into my research, he has two sons and I asked them, you know, well, what happened to your father during the war? And all they knew is that he was sent to Siberia. They didn't know why or how long he was there or when or why he was released. And thanks to like a rabbit hole, I found a nine page document written in my great uncle Ginnick's hand through the Hoover Institution at Stanford University that explained it all. The reason he was arrested the day he and Herta were put on a train, the 45-day journey to this town called Altine in Siberia. What were they they were forced to do there? How they were eventually granted amnesty and without giving too much away, the whole story, his entire storyline basically uh, in this one document. And so that was an incredible find and not just to fill the gap in the family story, but to pass it over to his sons who have since, you know, taken it and, and preserved it in their own personal ways. So... Uh, that one stands out. <laughs> wow. Okay. And not to make light of this at all, but what comes to mind a little bit is national treasure. When he goes on this hunt, this, this hunt and tracks everything down, tracks these documents down. What was that? Um, what was that experience? Like you hearing one thing and you're like, okay, I got to get to the bottom of this. And the next mm -hmm. thing, you know, you said it was, you said Stanford, you're, you're reading something. Mm -hmm. uh, if I remember that correctly, it's Stanford. How, what was that process like of tracking those things down? I mean, I felt like a detective at times, right? Because you're just, I just kept asking questions and I kept digging and digging and, and thank God for the internet. Like if I had tried to write this 20 years before, I think I would have hit a lot of roadblocks, but every day there's more and more digitalized, you know, records, whether it's through the International Tracing Service or the Holocaust Museum or um, Hayas, or for some reason, the Hoover Institution at Stanford University has an incredible World War II database. Um, and I would find them through like a, a Yahoo group that I'd say, hey, I'm trying to research on a relative that I know was sent to Siberia and eventually fought for General Anders in the army. And they'd say, oh, reach out to this person at this place. And then at the UK Ministry of Defense, you'll find army records. And sure enough, I did. I found records. I found medals of honor for two of the relatives who fought in the army. And being able to pass those on to the family was really special. So it felt a bit like being a detective. And I just kind of never gave up. I don't know. I just kept asking and <laughs> kept digging. That is so, so good. So good. What do you hope that young people take away from watching this project? that they can do more than they think they can, that they can survive more than they think they can. Because what this story really is, is a coming of age story. And all of the 20 somethings and uh, in the story go through an enormous arc growth trajectory in the course of the series. They start it um, thinking that they're incapable of certain things that they learn that they're absolutely capable of by the end because wow. circumstances hit them and, and they, they're forced to grow. They're forced to discover things about themselves and strengths and capacities they didn't know they had. And I think it's actually, particularly for, for your venue, it's a gift to young people because it it's a demonstration that they're stronger than they know. Well, I really, I hope they will watch. I, I mean, I think it it is, I, you know, I think it is really important to not feel like history is at such a distance. I mean, I yeah. think we have to educate ourselves about history, but I, I really believe in the power of television and stories to really mm -hmm. make that history come alive in a different way. And I, uh, I feel so altered by like having had a chance to live alongside the courts family. And so I hope that um, young people, no matter what background they come from, that they can find a way to relate to this family, because I think it is a very specific perspective in some ways, but I think within that specificity, universality can happen. And I think, you know, this is a family fundamentally that is just trying to get back around the dinner table together. And I think so many people can relate to that. And I really hope that young people engage with it. Yeah. Um, 
You know, I think that the spirit of resilience that exists mm -hmm. within this family, um, you know, the amount of um of resolve uh, wow. that is expressed um in you know within this family, it's something that I I feel as a former young person, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it it's I, I think that there's a there's a challenge now that that a lot is um this sort of separation that Erica's talking about, um, that things that can feel distant. But yeah, I think what we we're trying to say is that if anybody is fortunate enough and lucky enough to make it to their elder years, they also were young and feeling the exact same things. Like we're actually yeah. not so distinct in that yeah. way. We have all of this in common and we wanted to do the opposite of, um, of what our parents wanted to do. And the music might've sounded like this instead of that, but it's this, you know, these, these things um, uh, are, are in human nature. And I think that that's, that's experienced in the love and the the searching that that exists in the longing within our series, and I think uh, there's a, there's big feeling and big emotion, and I, mm -hmm. and I and I feel like that's something that that hopefully will be um, you know a portal for for audiences of, of of any age and for the younger audience to come and find. Completely. And we're so excited to just be able to bring this to our audience because it is young people and we feel like there is a gap. Like a lot of young people aren't informed about the Holocaust. So this is this is really near and dear to us. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview. I know it's going to impact and hopefully educate our audience. Um, and then I wanted to ask to switching lanes a little bit here, being an actor and choosing to do different projects or even just in general, it's it's popular and it's common to get negative feedback on social media or hate on social media. What is some advice that you would give to up and coming actors or even successful actors of how, a positive way to deal with some of the negative feedback that comes with being on social media? Oh, Michael. Well, I think, you know, as I said before, the way that we use our social media tools to spread hate is mm -hmm. one thing. And yeah. unfortunately, it's becoming a majority of a way to spread hate. Yeah. Because hate is so easy. You, It's easy to hate. Yeah. It's much harder to love. And when you are uh, an ambassador of love and you want to spread that to the world and you want to give that back, I think when you answer hate with love, it's hard to do. It's easy to mm -hmm. say. But I think that would be you know, overcoming what's becoming so popular. And so, uh, you know, the, the right thing to do or the right thing to write and to be part of this wave of hate, you become yeah. blind of what's human. Wow, it's a great question. It's coming from someone who's not big into social media herself. And that's partly because I don't think reading comments is a healthy habit. Mm -hmm. And for young people, I know it's just part of life. Um, but if you believe in something and you're passionate about something, be proud of it. And no matter what people think, I mean, a lot of people probably would have told me not to spend so much time trying to unearth this story that, you know, wasn't, hadn't been passed down to me personally. Um, I, I think if you go into something with your, with your heart and you know, you're in the right place, nothing else really matters. And, and I, and I kind of feel like that about our show, I know we'll get all sorts of feedback and I'll probably see things on social media, but I'm so proud of what we made and of the effort that I'm going to try to let all that fall away. It's to remind them that they're an actor. Mm. Um, yeah. If I have a minute to tell you, my grandmother was a psychoanalyst mm. and they were still in Germany. They were, she had a practice in Germany that extended from 19, I mean, uh, 30 through 1934. And the, during the whole rise of the Third Reich, she saw patients. And I, I'm imagining that patient after patient might come in with a very different story. One person might say, uh, you know, I'm a Jewish professor. I just lost my position at university. I don't know why. The next person might come and say, I hate the Jews. I have kids. The next person might come in and be a kid saying, my parents are pressuring me to join the Hitler youth. I, uh, I don't know what to do. And she had to sit there and be a psychoanalyst even though you know her husband had had to escape to Turkey and she would soon be joining him and so on. She had to sit there as a psychoanalyst and do her job. And her job was to listen. Wow. And her job was to help try to heal each soul that sat in a seat across from her. It was not to say, I don't agree with this. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, you know, you're wrong and so on. It was to try to heal each one. And as actors, we have a job that's no less meaningful than that. We do it with our work. We do it with our work. 
we try to bring people to a place of empathy with our work. Let your work speak. That's what I would say to that actor. Yeah, for me, it, it's for it. This is for me. It's very hard to respond to hate with love. Like I, mm -hmm. I got some when I got some hateful messages. I would be like, it's really hard for me to believe that people would like really make an effort to hurt I people. And I, I'd be like, really? Do you really want to hurt me so bad? You've never met with me. With a push of a button, you know. Yeah. Click. But yeah. and I, I don't understand how hate is so easy for people. And well, the the more love you have in your life the better your life is. So seriously, guys, just like, I don't know, love each other. What What's your problem? <laughs> like, really. And if you get a full yeah. message, just like breathe and know that in your little world, these people don't exist. Like just create totally. love your own life. Yeah. Totally. I have a 24 hour rule. If I ever get like a negative message on socials, I, my instinct is like, I want to react. I want to defend. I'm, but 24 hours later, I feel better and I can look at it from a different lens. So I know exactly what you're talking about. You have to take that deep breath. I think I have about 30 seconds left. So if you want to talk fast, I wanted to know if there's any funny behind the scenes moments that happen while you're filming offset onset that you can share. Well, this is my real life wife, just so you know that she's my wife in real life. No, it's not true. But we are we like, don't know how, but we already been husband and wife before. And we're just coming back and we're in a couple therapy now for yeah. the next show that we're gonna be cast again as husband <laughs> and wife or grandma and grandpa. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. There you will let you know. We can't wait to be cast again as as husband or maybe what what divorcees. Divor <laughs> yeah, something else. Yeah. Spread the love. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. Thank you both so much. It was an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Thank you. Great to chat with you too. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you. You too.